Mustard Knuckle. Hello everybody, Mustard Knuckle back again, heading out in the KV-85. Trying to get a shot on this tiger around the loops. Got that guy. Trying to get a shot on this tiger, and but I gotta go and see. Oh, maybe. All right, that's two ricochets off there. So we'll do the gameplay tips history of the KV-85. Kind of interesting. Kind of one of those deals where they made more than they should have probably, and maybe should have moved on a little sooner than they did. But we'll talk about that as we go. I'm not going to wait for this tiger anymore. I think it ricocheted, ricocheted two or three shots off of him, so I'm going to move on. There's guys over here, I assume going from A to B. So I'm going to try and catch him. Oh, he's going to right down that street. Let's see what we can do here. Do, 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 do. No. Nobody? Ugh. I, I get confused sometimes looking at that map. And I'll turn and I'll look down a street and then I'll get nailed from like the other side and it just infuriates me. I'm sure it never happens to any of you. Alright, let's see. Oh boy, there's a whole bunch of them coming. A little bit to the right. Okay, they're there. This guy needs to like move somewhere. Oh, somebody got him over there. Alright, let's see. Oh, there's a good tall wall here. That'll actually give me some help. Can't get him now. So the KV-85, this is basically a KV-1S with the turret that ended up on the IS-1. I think it was the IS-85 project turret that ended up on this thing. So it was kind of um, the IS-85 wasn't ready to move on yet. And the KV-85 was, so they thought, well, let's put this on that and get moving here. The problem was that the uh, KV-85 was just an, was just a uh, KV-1S, so it had a little bit less armor, it, and it basically hamstrung the whole thing. They built 100 and, almost 150 of these things, so I mean, they got decent armor, but the KV-1S was its own mess to begin with, um, and the KV-1, the regular gun, was starting to be kind of outdated which is why they needed an 85 in the first place. So there were a lot of shortcomings here, um, but this was the fastest way to get, get this guy. Nice, oh my gosh. How often does that work? Like maybe 15% of the time, maybe. So they, uh, they stuck this turret on here. Somebody else around the corner up here. I think. Man, I am 100% paranoid right now. Oh, there he is. It's too slow. I got lucky, and he's gonna be upset. That makes me mad when I do that. I get the first shot, and it ricochets, and then I get one shot by the other guy. Oh, here's more guys. This is great. Boom, and okay. I don't want to. I want to shoot at him, but I don't want to because I'm telling him where I am, but he's not looking still. Oh, oh somebody else got him. Good deal. All right. Well, they're cleared out. Wow. That was remarkably easy compared to how my games usually go in this thing. So, all right, we're getting an option for the bomber. We'll take it. The the 85 millimeter turret was good. Uh, they tried to jam this 85 millimeter gun in a regular KV-1 turret first, which was a total fail. Not nearly enough room in there to um, to work. So they they couldn't do that. And I was just sending those guys a message saying, you know, nice backup. They can't, I mean, I pointed out my spot on the map a couple times, and they came and saved me, basically. It was pretty cool, because a lot of times you get on a team where you can do that, and literally you don't see anyone until uh, after you get killed, and they show the other guy where he was, and he gets blown up right then, you know, rather than like 10 seconds earlier, which would have saved you, but whatever. Part of the game, just for fun. Let's see. Who shall I crash in front of? Let's see. So what I like to do, I used to try to fly it out, but I'm wasting like 30 seconds. But now I figure if I can crash in front of somebody and put a big old fireball right in front of them, 
that, that might make their lives a little bit more difficult for five seconds, ten seconds, so whatever. Um, okay, let's see. So KV-85, it's a KV-1S, so the armor's not that great. Um, maneuverability and everything wasn't terrific because this was already basically outdated. I mean, the whole point of it was to... Um, to fight tigers uh, and the the later versions of the German stuff, and what you know the irony of that is that the Germans were building stuff to destroy the KV-1 and the T-34, so they did that. And meanwhile, the Soviets kind of sat on the KV-1 and the T-34, and then they thought, oh well, we need to make something that's a little better. So that's where this whole deal started. And like I said, they made 150 of these. They saw very, very limited combat. Um, they were they were around from maybe early 44 until the end of the war. And there were several cases where they basically got totally wrecked by the Germans, um, where they would be trying to, because they used this as a kind of a assault tank, I guess, what the uh, Americans called it. Holy cow, this game's almost over already. Wow. Um, so they would kind of use this to, you know, break through and, and get moving. And uh, it wasn't really the right tank for that job because the armor was so low. And by now the Germans easily had um, guns that could kill this. So it was really not a problem at all. Um, so not the best choice for that. But that's what kind of sealed the fate and made the IS-1 into a thing and made that project move along a lot more game over okay four kills three assists third place that's cool um and that's what made the is1 happen uh which ended up being a, a significant increase uh in or a significant improvement over the kv85 but that's what kind of laid the foundation and that is the end hope you enjoyed the video Good luck, have fun, we'll see you in the next one.